welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I'm, do I'm here to do a book review for August Kitko and the Mechas of Space, or Mechas in Space. Full transparency, I won this in a Goodreads giveaway, and, and I won a digital ebook copy. And not being a great ebook reader, it sat on my phone for a little bit because that's how I use my Kindle app. And I finally got around to reading it in July, which was also the month that it came out. And this book caught my attention because of one, mechas and space. I like mechas as a archetype, or I like mechas as an element in my science fiction, but I don't see a lot of it. Also, just the naming style of this book, August Kitko and the Mechas of Space, with those hard consonants, that just caught my attention. And a fit of wanting to work on my ebooks a little bit better, it was the next in line, and so I picked it up and started reading it, and I absolutely loved it. It is one of my favorite sci fi's of this year. So in this book, we are following two perspectives. The first one is August Kitko, who goes by Gus, and the second is Ardent Violet, who is, I was going to say international rock star, but as this is a multi-world society now, galactic superstar, known throughout many different planets for their music and their stage presence, and just their personality itself. And it is the end of the world. These mechas have started coming to the colonies and wiping them out just straight up killing them and humanity doesn't know why their last countermeasure to stop the mecha named juliet failed and now it's just time to have a good time and to die basically so the book opens with Gus contemplating how he wants to die whether he wants to take his own life and in what form, or if he wants to allow the robot dogs, that's kind of the description that they they seemed like, that comes with the mecha to kill him instead. And you get at the very beginning that Gus and Arden have had a fling quite recently, and it ended explosively. So they are both at the same end of the world party, Guess is supposed to be. Guess was originally invited. It was. It was originally supposed to be a victory party, but like I said, the last attempt to stop the mechas failed, and instead of playing at the victory party, Guess is now just wandering, contemplating killing himself. Juliet, the mecha, arrives and starts destroying things, and then another mecha arrives named Grey Malkin and starts fighting Juliet. And so in the chaos, this fascinates Gus, and he is hearing chords and tones and music as the two mechas are communicating. And he decides to go play the piano, because he's a, he's a jazz pianist. So he starts playing, and Grey Malkin hears him, and takes him, and makes him his pilot. And then things go from there. This is a galactic story. This is the a first in a series. So the first thing I want to focus on this book is world building and ambiance. Music is highly important to this story, but you can be like me and not know a whole lot because you get the sense of the music through the writing and through the story that we are being told. And it ends up that each mecha that has rebelled against its maker, has each chosen a pilot of some musical background, but why different varieties? Just like each of us here on, and like just like each member of humanity likes different music, the mechas are the same. They all like different forms of music, and it shows how you need people of different mindsets in order to get things done. Wait, no, that's a theme. So. Music is very important to the story. It's how the pilots communicate with their mechas, and it's how 
they have to work together by finding a way to combine their music so that they can work together. And I'm probably explaining this really badly. This is also set in the far future. Like Earth has had a World War III. Um, it's gone on to the galactic expansion. This is not a perfect society. There are still different socioeconomic classes. You still have human nature, people being mean or not willing to listen. But in other ways, things have become more normalized. White has envisioned a future where some things have, in some things we have come together as humanity and in other things we still have problems. And in many ways that type of society feels more genuine, more likely that it can actually happen, more plausible. It feels very comfortable to get into the mindset of and to listen to, to watch, or to go throughout the story in. And so I really think that the world building ambiance is good. And it's also going to be very much divisive. If you don't like the, the feel of the world building and the ambiance, you're not going to like the book. Another one that's going to be divisive is the characters. Gus has many problems. Gus is depressive. He has suicidal ideation insecure. Basically, he is the not likely hero. He only got into it because Grey Malkin liked his music. It, it never would have been a path that he himself would have sought. And for me, that made him interesting because we see that he lets people bully him into doing things and we watch him come more into his own and realize that he has a voice that he can use and that he should use. He should not just let everybody tell him what to do and accept that as his reality, which gives a great counterpoint to Arden Violet, who is very much like a, nah, I'm going to do my own thing and that's great that you want me to fall in line. That's not how this is going to work. For some reason, Gus and Arden are attracted to one another, and their relationship definitely takes on those vibes from the monster movies or the alien invasion stories where a couple meet, they don't really know each other, but now it's the end of the world, so we're gonna work together and look out for one another. And that's really the, like, the foundation of their relationship. I had mentioned before that they had a fling and it ended badly and then they were sort of making up through music. Arden was about to join Gus's jam section when Grey Malkin took him. So then Arden is like, no, I don't know what's going on and then tries to go save Gus. Puts Arden in situations where now they are traumatized due to the invasion, which I think everyone is traumatized anyway. but. They have a very more visceral, visceral, that, that, but they have a very more visceral reaction from everything. And Arden ended up does end up saving Gus's life in a way at the very beginning. And Arden is a good mirror to Gus because they're not going to let anybody tell them what to do or get away with shit. And yet the two of them want to see if they can have a real relationship. And Arden's just like, I'm all in, let's do this, let's have fun. And Gus is like, I want something real. So it's interesting to see how they are proceeding. And I thought that was a very healthy way to interact. Like, are we gonna do this relationship? We're not forcing one another. In what manner do, what type of relationship do we want to have? At the same time, ooh, the world is not what we know anymore and our lives are not necessarily our own. And then we have the side characters. We have Dahlia, who is Arden's agent and friend, and who is used to Arden's hijinks and just out there, and is trying to help Arden through their legal issues. And you have that great dynamic of, this is like Arden's aunt. 
she's gonna, Dahlia's gonna tell it like it is, and nobody, you know, she'll tell Arden off. Especially if she thinks Arden is doing things that are inappropriate or inconsiderate. And I thought that was a very interesting relationship dynamic. We, I mean, we do see that Arden isn't so stuck up that they think that everybody should worship them. They like having people around them who are going to call them out when they start acting big-headed, which gives some nuance to Arden's character because they are very much larger than life. And I guess I really only have those two main points to say. The other thing I loved about it was the technology and the big reveal of why the Mechas are coming to destroy humanity. But again, that's a big, big spoiler, so I can't actually talk about it beyond that. And I am very much interested to see how the rest of the series is going to play out. So if you like Mechas and space battles and music, I, I think this is going to work for you. And if you have read it, I'd love to hear your comments down below and hear what you thought. Thank you and have a great day.